Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia. I am an urban gardener growing about on about 154 square feet of space in my backyard. Today, I wanna to talk about extending your growing season as well as maximizing your harvest and ways that you can do that. So in my case, uh, I wanna talk about first grow bags. Grow bags or pots, honestly, um, that you can grow in even buckets. Uh, to extend your growing season as well as maximize the space that you have to grow in. Uh, a lot of plants will grow in grow bags. Uh, peppers will grow in grow bags, tomatoes, squash. A lot of plants will grow in grow bags. And so if you have a small amount of space to grow in ground or in uh, raised beds, you can turn to grow bags. Quick uh, story for me. Uh, last year, I started my pepper plants way too early, just out of excitement about, oh my goodness, it's about to be time to grow and wanting to get my hands in the soil. Uh, so if you're a new grower, <laughs> you'll start to understand that. Um, gardening is very addictive. Um, and so I started them too early and I got an aphid infestation. Um, and so I kept making sure that I kept the aphids off, but after a while I was like, I have to get these outside. So I turned to grow bags. I put them in grow bags. I set them outside during the day when it was warm enough. And then I was able to bring them in, in the house um, in the evenings when the temperatures were going to drop. Uh, another interesting story. I am one of those people that if it germinates, I have got to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say was because I'm going to try my hardest not to do that this year. Um, so I did this with my tomatoes last year. I was also growing tomatoes for my mother because she has a small uh, garden at her house. Either way, it was way too many. Um, I gave some away <laughs> and then some I still kept. Um, and so I turned to grow bags for the tomatoes as well. Um, I, I staked them in the grow bags and I grew them. What I found was that tomatoes will grow all the way through to your first frost. And so my last frost is April 5th and my first frost is sometime in November. Because I grow 365 days a year, uh, around July, August time, I need to start planting my fall vegetables. Um, and so I had to have space. And this showed me that I was able to continue to grow and harvest tomatoes, but also be able to get my fall vegetables into the raised beds. Um, and I do grow my fall vegetables all in the raised beds because I do grow undercover um, at a point in the year. So grow bags are a great way um, to extend your harvest. Uh, grow bags, buckets, pots, great way to extend your growing season. Um, and so aside from peppers and tomatoes, you can grow squash in grow bags. Um, you can even grow cucumbers in grow bags if you trellis them or, or have a space where they can just run. Uh, one thing that you wanna be um, cognizant about, um, cognizant, I don't know, I think I'm saying that right, whatever, about is making sure that the bags stay moist, the soil in the bags stay moist, and be sure to uh, fertilize. Because when you're growing in a grow bag, the, the uh, nutrients and the moisture is contained to that bag. So you wanna make sure that you pay attention to that. Um, another way that you can uh, maximize your harvest um, is to succession plant. And I talked about succession, succession planting in another video and I didn't explain it that well. So succession planting is planting um, a succession or a crop um, every so often. So for instance, with beans, I will plant my first uh, row of beans in, in my bed like the second week after my first frost. And then I'll come back two or three weeks later and I'll plant another row of beans. This way they will start to, um, to mature at different times. So you can have some for fresh eating, you can have some for preserving, you can even give some away to family and friends if you want to. Um, and so I plan to succession plant beans all year long. I have figured out, uh, or not figured out, I have done the research on the bean varieties that I have to see uh, their maturity dates and I have planned out 
the year of when I should be planting my beans. Uh, I am also going to succession plant my determinate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes are tomatoes that grow for a certain amount of time into a certain height and you're going to get your whole harvest pretty much at one time. So this is good because I want to make spaghetti sauce, I want to make salsa, um, I want to dehydrate some. And so this is a great way for me, able, me to be able to get my harvest all at once to be able to make those things that I want to make. Um, I also plan to succession plant my cucumbers. And so when I say succession for these, I mean, once my vine dies out, so around July-ish, my vine may die out and, uh, or get some type of pest <laughs> issue going on with them. So I have decided when I need to start my next set of cucumber plants, I will pull out the first succession, plant them again, um, because I have, a, I have varieties that will mature within my, my long growing season. Um, and so yeah, try succession planting. Squash is a good plant to succession plant as well, uh, especially if you have an early variety. Another thing that can be done is interplanting. So what interplanting is, is let's say you have this huge tomato plant. You can plant radishes around that plant or in front of that plant um, if, you, if it's gonna be able to get the sun that it needs to grow. Um, you can also do this with lettuces. Lettuces like a cooler temperature, but if you can get them some shade, but also be able to have sun, you can plant lettuce in between those larger plants. Um, and so I'm also going to do some interplanting, which will allow me to maximize my space, hence maximizing my harvest. Uh, and the last thing that I use to extend my growing season is I grow undercover. So I will plant my fall vegetables um, in maybe late August because where I am in zone 7B, it is hot <laughs> all the way. Sometimes through September, it is just hot and fall vegetables like cool, cooler weather. Um, but I will plant them um, in the beds and as the weather gets cooler, I will grow undercover. And so what I did was I saw this on the Grow Family Networks channel and it was very simple to make hoops for all of my beds, um, all of my raised beds. I am going to, what? I, well, well, no, I'll tell you what I did. I brought, purchased a uh, 10 foot piece of conduit. I cut it into two feet pieces hammer that in the ground around the garden bed, and then just slip PVC pipes down over top of it. Uh, makes great hoops. They're sturdy in most cases. Sometimes when it snows, they may lean a little bit, but <laughs> it doesn't hurt anything. Um, and then I brought six mil plastic from Lowe's and I put it over it. I use some of the little clamps and I can grow all year long. I am a 365 day a year grower. <laughs> so I hope this video helped. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I'm also over on Instagram at Miss Asia Spratly. I post there every day about the happenings in the garden. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye. Nope.